The hadith is narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that a man that has even the slightest bit of arrogance in his heart, he doesn't enter paradise. So, you know, a man sitting next to the Prophet ﷺ, he was a little bit confused about what exactly is kibir. So he further asked the Prophet ﷺ, he said, O Prophet of Allah ﷺ, a man loves for his clothes to be neat and nice and tidy. And likewise, he also wishes for, to have, for him to have good shoes. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, that's not really from kibir, rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beautiful and he loves beauty as well. Arrogance is when you reject the truth and you look down upon people. And you don't uh, respect people in the manner that, or in the due manner that they're supposed to be respected. So, you know, this is how the Prophet ﷺ, he described arrogance to be, that you reject the truth. Because when you look at yourself as you're something that you're really not, you begin to think that whatever anybody else is saying won't be the truth. Secondly, not only does that happen, rather Allah Azza wa Jal Himself, He takes the tawfiq out of you for you to be able to accept the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this in the Qur'an, He says, those that are arrogant in the land, I will turn them away from my signs, from my verses. As in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away that capability from within you of accepting truth. Not only does kibr do that to you, rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you from staying away from the truth. Now, you know, there's a lot of things that can be said about kibr, but to sum it up, usually when a person is mutakabbir, it's one of three things that happen. Or there's one of three signs that he can you know, look at and judge himself based on. Number one, is that you start to feel that you are greater than somebody else. Now you can either feel that you're greater than somebody else in something pertinent to the dunya. Like, you know, a new camera you got, for example. <laughs> or you can feel that you're greater than somebody else because of a certain trait that you have that's Islamic. Like for example, you pray a lot. Like for example, you fast a lot. Like for example, you you know uh, have ilm, or you read Quran, or you whatever it may be. You start to feel that you have precedence over over others because of that action. These are two aspects of one looking at himself as greater than somebody else. Now let's recap. First of all, in terms of the dunya. And everything pertinent to the dunya. If a person looks at himself as greater than somebody else because of a little piece of dunya that he has, then this person is amongst the most miserable of people. How so? Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said in a beautiful hadith, he said that the dunya with everything in it, the worldly life with everything in it is cursed. And cursed is everything within the dunya. Except, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, a person of knowledge and a person that seeks that knowledge. And then he made some exceptions, different narrations show different things. So if a person thinks he's greater than somebody else because he has more la'na than others, what kind of a miserable individual is this? And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if the dunya was to be equivalent in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, even the size of a mosquito's wing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wouldn't have given even a sip of water to an unbeliever. But He did give sips of waters, rather He gave them the dunya with everything in it. So if a person he thinks of himself greater than somebody else because of the little bit of dunya that he has. And this is a person that's really miserable. Worthless. His mind is not working straight. If he realizes these realities, that the dunya, it's a whole bunch of 
you know, except the goodness they're in, everything else is what? A test from Allah. And now let's come back to the deen. You can look at yourself as greater than somebody else because of some sort of uh, trait that you have that's Islamic trait. Let's take a person that's even seeking knowledge. When you walk into a meeting with people that are not going to Islamic classes, with people that don't keep a beard, with people that don't do this, don't do that. You walk into a meeting, do you look down upon him? Whether you like it or not, something comes in your heart. Maybe I'm a little bit better than him, maybe whatever, you know, something like that comes up in the heart of a mind, right? You look to another person, if you're really, really pious, you look to another person and you wish for him to be the one that says salam to you. You wish for him to go and tell people about the good that you've done and about the piety that you have. You know, this guy prays at night time and we give that example of the individual he was praying salah and everybody's like, subhanAllah, this guy's got so much pursuit and all of a sudden he turns around and says, I'm fasting as well, right? So you wish for people to, you know, express those good qualities and those good traits that you have. Now when you look down upon other people, what happens? You have committed an act of kibr. You have been arrogant. And we understand the promise of the Prophet ﷺ to the individual that's arrogant, that he will end up nothing, nowhere on the Day of Judgment except in hellfire. What do you have to be arrogant about? And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, whenever a person says that people have been destroyed, then this individual is the most destroyed of them all. What does that mean? When a person goes out and he says, you know, oh, they, you know, people do these kind of things and people, subhanAllah, you know, may Allah guide the people, may Allah guide the people, like he's not from the people, he doesn't need the guidance. He's a person of stature, he's beyond that. So the ulama, they said, look at the two people. What did both of them do? The one person that wasn't so practicing out in the open, he had a good thought about another believer based on the apparent outset. So because of that, he had a clean heart towards this individual, which is a good deed. It's called husnul bun. And this person did the exact opposite. In his mind, he's like, man, this guy is going to talk to me. And this happens a lot of times when people, and you guys are all, inshallah ta'ala, from good families and good people. A lot of times people, you know, non-practicing people, the one thing that they complain about is like, you know, when we go and meet practicing folks, what happens? We don't feel comfortable around them. They start talking about issues that are beyond our comprehension. And the Prophet ﷺ or Ali radiallahu ta'ala and we used to say, talk to the people based on that which they will understand. If someone's around you, Look at his feelings and consider the fact that the guy is around you. Don't start discussing a topic that will totally go above his head. He won't understand. He might feel offended. At every single moment, you have to adapt a very, very da'i-like demeanor. A person walks up to you, make sure you give him a smile in the face. Over here, this individual that walked up to this practicing so-called person in the sight of Allah, this person will be better. Why? Because this guy did a good deed, and this guy did a deed that could lead him to hell. Because he's having kibbutz against this individual. But on the open, you know, this guy looks good, he's got the beard, he's, got the, he's praying salah, she's got the hijab, she's wearing the niqab, but that's all out in the open. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on that day, everything that's within the heart will come out. I want to leave you off with a story of... Uh, Malik ibn Dinar. Malik ibn Dinar was one of the pious predecessors. At a very early, early age in Islam, Malik ibn Dinar he went to India with about 16 or 17 friends of his. They were all pious men. And because of him, a lot of Islam was actually able to spread in India. So he was sitting there one day, and a man from amongst the children of the governor walked by. And you know, Malik ibn Dinar saw that the way this guy is walking, 
you know, he's got some sort of kibir in there. Because you can tell that from the walk of an individual. So Malik ibn Dinar, he saw him from a distance, he said, you know, it would have been better, it would have been more beautiful if he didn't walk in this manner. So the son of the governor looked at Malik ibn Dinar, he said, do you know who I am? Malik ibn Dinar knew, he said, yeah, I know exactly who you are. Brother, I even know your father. <laughs> So I know exactly who you are. He said, in the beginning of your creation, you were nothing more than a little piece of semen. And at the end of your creation, after a couple of days only of your death, you will be nothing more than a smelling corpse, a dead body that stinks and people don't even want to come close to it. And between that, you have nothing in your stomach more than the feces. Who the heck do you think you are? So when Malik ibn Dinari said this to the child of gover- the governor, he just kind of said, he was shocked. And he couldn't do anything because he realized the reality of cre- creation. And that's why the ulama, they said, a solution for kibir is to go and rem- remind yourself of the reality of your creation. And that's why Ibn Qayyim, rahmatullah, he said, whatever you do, however high you get, at the end of the day, you're going to come back and you're going to use the bathroom. 